Last year, the Bermuda government decided to extend the cruise ship dock at the old Royal Navy dockyard at the western end of Bermuda. As a result of survey for the construction work, a sunken vessel was discovered. You know, it was one of those odd moments because a lot of people have dove this area for a long, long time, and no one sort of said, you know, there's a massive ship out there. And so we were all, you know, sort of, wow, there's something there, but not really quite believing it. We had eventually, with James, went out with the boat and actually dropped a buoy on what the object was that he was spotting on the side scan, which looked definitely like a boat. But it wasn't until you, you drop down on the site and see it coming out of the gloom that you realize, oh my, this is the entire structure of an entire ship. This was brought to the attention of the local shipwrecks authority and uh, ourselves at the Bermuda Maritime Museum. And we determined jointly that it was necessary to do an archaeological project to find out the true nature of this vessel. As often happens when there's a construction project, uh, the constructors run into something unforeseen. In this case, as they were extending the, the pier, uh, they, they ran into a, a shipwreck. And in order to mitigate the impact on that shipwreck, which is possibly historic, uh, they needed somebody to come in and tell them exactly what they had. Uh, hence, they, they phoned us up, and here we are, checking this site out. The archaeological research, which is the thing that we're concentrated more on here, is um, recording. Uh, and the ways we're going to record, we, we've decided to take a layered approach, use different, lots of different methods. The wreck's in uh, excellent condition. Um, aside from the top works that are all missing, it's of course concreted with coral. It's become a reef in itself now. Uh, the, the fish and the marine life on this site are, are unbelievable. The first thing we do generally is draw a, a plan view of this. We'll photograph it from every angle so that if we do have questions we can go back and take a look. Normally we are just recording the dimensions of every aspect of the site. So you now we do length and breadth of the whole thing but we also measure all of the attributes and elements of, of the site, how it's, how it's built essentially. What we're trying to do is create a photo mosaic in which we take several pictures and then stitch them all together uh, later on in a, in a computer program which allows you to have a perfect plan view of the wreck site and this is a really useful tool for a number of reasons. You can use it for public outreach and they're a way for people that can't get down to see the wreck to, to get an idea of what it looks like. In many ways we're sort of like fleas trying to map an elephant. You can't see the, the entire vessel at once unless you map it out, draw it down, and so that's basically what we've done in the last few days, is completely uh, diagram this ship from top to bottom, uh, get a good close look at it, and go back with data that we will then do an analysis of what exactly this thing is. The research is very difficult because it may have never had an identification, may have never had a name. Um, the vessel probably went down without any loss of life, etc. It's not a great, it's probably not reported in newspapers all that much. We always think of today, as the era of quick change, when the reality is in the 19th century, uh, as far as uh, modes of transportation on water, uh, they were changing very rapidly. And the different ship classes were changing rapidly, uh, going from two or three basic ship types to a multitude of ship types. In this case, we have what you would call a self-propelled steam lighter, which is a, a, a vessel used for lightering, transferal of cargo. It's also probably a, a derivation of that called a derrick lighter, which is a form of steam lighter that has a derrick on it, which we are pretty sure that that's a spindle. The spindle of the derrick is at the, at the stern of the vessel. So it's one of these vessels that might have been used for cargo, it might have been used for transporting coal, it might have even been used for transporting riprap in, in creating the dockyard. The development is going ahead, and the wreck is definitively under the cruise ship berth, so to speak. Not the dock itself, so it's not in any danger from the building of the dock. That's been made clear. 
there's a situation where we have increasingly large cruise ships coming in to the, to the dockyard. We have to consider is this vessel at threat from those ships, but also is that vessel a threat to the cruise ships? So the best recommendation is to remove the spindle. It's a, it's a single element, very small, it's probably about a foot, foot diameter, and it's pretty easy to just remove that and remove the threat to the cruise ships themselves. The most exciting aspect of this project is the collaborations that have ensued based on it. I think because of the urgency of the project, it meant that all the participants have sort of come together very quickly, but actually come together very smoothly and in a, and in a manner that you could only hope for. We envision uh, involving the, the government uh, custodian of wrecks in many of these projects, and so it's really going to be a wonderful three-way venture between government, the Maritime Museum, and the University, uh, East Carolina University, to promulgate and, and uh, continue to do wonderful underwater research at Bermuda.